Sorry to keep you all eating. So now we do have a quorum of members present. We have Kathy, uh, Dina Karen joining us on Zoom. Bob Lyons chairing in person. We have Lisa Cairo and Carl Stump. Uh, so we have our quorum. We can right. begin. And I will call the meeting of the Public Works Committee uh, to order. Uh, our first item of business is the minutes of May 8th. I'll move approval. I do have one. Um, I just I'll second to make. All right. We have a motion to approve the minutes and a second. What Lisa would you like to make as an addition or um, under item number three in the minutes? And thank you, Sean, for capturing all the um, comments I raised, the points for consideration as we work on this design um, regarding the raised crosswalk. I actually advocated for raised crosswalks wherever it would be beneficial for pedestrians and cyclists. So I don't I don't know if I said specifically at that um, that intersection. Okay. So that's, much as that's the one that caught my ear. So you're thinking all crosswalks wherever it could work because I know in, on truck routes you're not supposed to put them in. Um, I don't want to inconvenience drivers who are uh, well, the whole things a truck. Oh, yeah. Right. Parmenter Street's a truck. Right. Yeah. But I'm thinking, where does the bike path go? It goes on the sides. So it's where the bike path would be crossing the streets that it not crossing Parmenter, but crossing the driveways or the. Oh, the side streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We typically wouldn't raise just a crosswalk at an intersection because someone turning the corner wouldn't expect that. They might lose their traction. So normally it's an online kind of thing, like you drive across it, but not a, not at an angle, preferable. All right. Well, then we can, we don't need to amend the minutes if you think it's not feasible. Okay. That, that's the one I, I thought we had been talking about. So I apologize for that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do it at a stop sign or something like that. All right. So, so then do we want it modified. Or not. No, I no. I'll withdraw my request to modify it, but I'll still second or move approval. All right. So then we have a motion uh, and a second to approve the minutes as drafted. Any more discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the minutes of May 8th are approved. Item number two is street surface treatments, award of a bid. This is on I'll move approval or approval of a recommendation to finance and council. And would it include that caveat that we In an amount. And scope? Uh, well, I was just going to move that we recommend to the finance committee and common council the award of a construction contract to Farner Asphalt Sealers LLC in an amount not to exceed $194,837. Is there a second to that? I have. I'll second. Um, okay, under discussion. I mean, I think it's important uh, to say if, if we budgeted what, 250,000 for that process this year? Uh, yes. So if, Farner's bid comes in at 100, it is $194,000. That gives us another $56,000, give or take. And it would seem to me that that's what we did last year is you apply that to the projects and do, do more streets rather than. We've, for the last couple of years, yeah. we've done that. And that's why I was asking if we want to expand scope to maximize use of the budget, because in previous years, we didn't do that. It was just excess money. I would argue for expanding the scope so that you do more streets. So then we do not approve. I mean, to me, if we are specifically being um, asked to to recommend the award of a contract not to exceed one hundred ninety four thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars, that does not leave room to do additional work and expand the scope. Like if we've got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars budgeted, why would we? 
why would we put this restriction on and not say, hey, since we have a, an, a bid for much less than, or yes, enough yeah. less uh, for us to do more work by um, using the full $250,000 budget and increase the project scope to include crack filling and chip sealing, why would we not make that the motion? <laughs> that we... yeah. well, that's come up in the past because the bid is, I'm just going to say $195,000, yeah. because that's the bid amount. We award that bid amount, and then later we introduce a change order to say, oh, and by the way, we want to do some extra work at these known unit prices, and the scope of the contract grows, but we're in this sort of awkward place now to not we don't have a change order to a contract because we don't have a contract yet. Right. So and I guess that's why I'm wondering why would we why would we jump to the change order stage to make sure that we can allocate this fifty six thousand dollars, fifty five thousand. Yeah. Why not just go cleanly with the uh, the bid that we've received and the current scope, knowing that now we'll have some money left over put towards the extra work. Yeah, it just gives staff an intention. If if we said nothing to staff except let's get Farner under contract for $195,000, that's that's our authorization. And the extra 56,000 is up to council to decide what to do with if anything. So if they don't tell staff, oh by the way, we intend for you to increase the scope of this so that Farner maximizes the budget allocation. We don't have any authority to do that. Right, but you, you won't have authority to do it. Kendra and I are both on finance, so I think we can carry that knowledge over to the finance committee meetings and understand that this is the case. I, I don't see that awarding, uh, going with this you know, straight construction contract for the street surface treatments, I don't see that closing the door to use 55,000 to do a change order in the future. It, it, doesn't. it doesn't, it absolutely right. doesn't. It just doesn't tell staff that is what we intend for you to do with it. All, all the council will have told Sean Ellsrud is go spend $195,000 fixing streets as per the bid, but it won't tell them, oh, by the way, we also want you to spend another 55. Well, then I guess I would recommend in the future that if there is a recommendation in an agenda item, it cover the whole recommendation. Okay. Not, yeah, not as, as a note. I think we wanted to get at least this far in if there's support for going further, add that on. So I know in the past couple of years, we've said, yeah, let's award this contract. But also if the council's amenable, have them direct staff to authorize increasing the scope. Is that a separate motion? It could be a separate yes, motion. Yes, sure. I would prefer that. Yeah. yeah, I think that would make more sense. Okay. So right now the motion is let's let's get a contract for $194,837. I second it. Yeah. Second it. So oh, let's just vote. Oh. You want, I mean, we can vote that down and then do another motion or just put we a substitute motion. And sure. add on to it with a second motion. Well, but I could do that too. What would be easiest for you? Uh, this is absolutely fine. Because then if the council doesn't want us to go further, we'll still have this motion. That's a good point. Right. Okay, so then we're just at this point just voting on the 194,837 and not giving any direction to anybody about what to do with the additional $56,000. Correct. Yep. I would prefer that we uh, put it back clearly that our intention, the committee's intention anyway, would be to put that money back into additional. Yeah, well, we can do that after we close this motion. Okay. All right, then we have a motion and a second um, for the 194.837. Is there any further discussion on that? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we have that amount approved. 
Okay, so I'll make a motion that the that we recommend to the finance committee and the council that the additional budget amount of approximately fifty five fifty six thousand um, dollars be spent on additional um, additional work for street sure. surface treatments as recommended by staff. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I will. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further or any discussion on this motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and we will also make that recommendation then. All right, item number three, Red Tail Ridge TIA report approval. Jump to the report if you want. Or this is just a recommendation memo, but it's intended to summarize the key findings of the report in terms of who would be asked to do what. One a lot isolated to attributable to the development no. of the And it's somewhat speculative when you're talking about what we think traffic might be 27 years from now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, I have a number of comments and questions, um, but for now I will, I guess I will move, you need us to move approval of the TIA with the recommendations? That's my recommendation. Okay. Yeah. I will make that motion um, to open up discussion. All right. Is there a second to Lisa's motion? I'll second it. All right. We have a motion and a second now under discussion. Lisa? Okay. Um, I had a question. Okay. Let's look at all these. You've got the recommendations up here. Okay. So 1A. Um, dedicate sufficient street right of way at the proposed Bellefontaine Boulevard intersection with High Road and construction by 2050, if deferred, um, both eastbound and westbound left turn lanes on Bellefontaine Boulevard. So a couple questions here. Construction by 2050. Why, why would we advise waiting so long? Um, full occupancy is expected in 2029. What assurance do we have? And since this is a developer, responsibility, what assurance do we have that the developer will be here 21 years later <laughs> to, yeah. to build the left turn lanes? I, I'm concerned about that. Um, second question, does this include building a left turn lane on Bellefontaine Boulevard within the Misty Valley neighborhood? And if so, is that really the developer's responsibility? It's a recommendation of the report that both of those things be done prior to 2050. Right. So I think it's a great point that in practice, that probably should just be done with phase one. It, I mean, That's I build a road and then rebuild it. It, it just gets more expensive. Uh, and I agree that it's not this developer's responsibility to rebuild Stella mm -hmm. Fontaine Boulevard in the Misty Valley subdivision. It's just a recommendation of the report. Okay. So we need to actually, yeah, that should be split into two pieces. The eastbound and westbound part of that should go under city responsibilities, really. Right. So e this the eastbound this sentence except eastbound should slide down into two effectively. Slide eastbound to city. Eastbound left turn. Okay. Um, all right, so that's two questions. Recommendation 1B, uh, the northbound bypass. I, I am not sure I like the idea of this bypass lane. Um, and I'm mainly concerned about people trying to, or, or people on bikes or pedestrians trying to cross over into the conservancy, uh, you know, just thinking of what that would look like headed from the development into the conservancy seeing a car that's turning left and possibly waving me on and I go and 
the car that I didn't see comes plowing around the yeah. right side. Yeah. I think that's a safety hazard and I'm, I would prefer not to see um, that northbound bypass lane be um, uh, be installed. Um, recommendation 2A, I think there will be a lot of support for no left turn from Old Creek Road to Century. Um, I did have some questions about the Frank Lloyd Wright and Century intersection. I know that wasn't included. I had had that question as I read through the document yesterday and then I saw the message today. And Sean, I wonder if since it's not part of the public record, I wonder if you could explain what the inquiry was about that Frank Lloyd Wright and Century intersection. Yeah, so I think the first question was why was it not included? And the short version of my answer was it's beyond the one mile limit that our guidelines would suggest. So it wasn't included in the scope of the study. I, I can see interest in that. It just was beyond where the typical zone of influence is for our guidelines. Uh, one of the recommendations too then was, well, let's limit or prohibit some parking, some on-street parking that's currently Pheasant Branch Road, and maybe on part of uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright Avenue. Uh, because right now, especially in snow banks, in, in, in encroach onto uh, Pheasant Branch Road, the width of it gets pretty good. And I know that's been a conversation off and on for the past several decades. In fact, Frank Lloyd Wright was designed to be four lanes with no parking, but in the interim, we decided parking would be okay uh, until traffic became a problem. And we have not yet determined traffic to be a problem. Um, I can attest to it actually not being a problem because I, ever since I uh, interacted with the folks who live on Old Creek and they expressed their concerns about the cut through traffic, I realized I was contributing to that problem. <laughs> so, so I and my whole family, we've been going through that Frank Lloyd Wright intersection now and uh, I don't through it during rush hour, but my husband does. I asked him today, how is it? Do you ever encounter, you know, serious traffic? And he said, no, it's a very pleasant left turn. And I haven't found Frank Lloyd Wright personally to be a problem unless someone's parked in the intersection, which happens. Um, but, but I do agree that Pheasant Branch Road in winter gets pretty good. Yes. Right. So that, but that's a separate we issue. We might consider we seasonal parking at some point, but it's beyond the scope of this TIA. Okay. So if we can have that issue of how to how to fix the Pheasant Branch parking situation, if we can put that on a future agenda, I would greatly appreciate it. And I know my district would too. Um, moving on to 2B, Parmenter Schneider, uh, Belfontaine intersection. So is this, and Sean, I'm gonna ask you to walk us through the plans for Parmenter and how they line up with what the um, TIA is recommending. Because I know for instance, page 56 says there's a you know, plan for a traffic light at Parmenter and Schneider. And I'm wondering, do the recommendations in this document jive with what is preliminary in the preliminary plan for our mentor. Okay, so this figure eight one has a, can't seem to highlight it, just triangulated. Um, so that figure eight one has a bunch of lanes and that's in the current planning for when we rebuild Parmenter Street, uh, ideally next year to build all those lanes, but not a signal. The signal will come in whenever it's warranted or justified, but it's apart from this development. Then. Okay. But they are, so it is consistent. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, recommendation 2C, the 150 foot long, well, I guess, so this is Greenbrier and Parmenter, and you're saying that's consistent too? It, it also was in yeah, the previous TIA, the, the Bell Farm one. Mm -hmm. uh, part of what it doesn't know is by that time, uh, will traffic have diverted from Greenbrier onto Bellefontaine, in which case maybe we don't need it at Greenbrier. And only so much of Greenbrier is under city jurisdiction. So we'd have to get WISDOT concurrence before we start doing much there. Okay. Um, 3A, the four-way stop at High Road and Harmony. 
I think that could be useful for, you know, there's a school right there that could be useful for safety and to slow traffic down. Um, I will be talking to the um, Middleton Hills Neighborhood Association next month, um, and I can bring it up for discussion because there, there might actually be support for doing this sooner rather than later. Um, and also on page 45 of the document, it mentions the eastbound left turn movement from High Road onto Harmony. And I don't think we have anybody who wrote the eastbound left turn would be from Harmony on top. Hi, I think. Eastbound, I don't think so. Eastbound left would have to get you onto High Road, wouldn't it? Oh, from the school. That'd become if you're going down High Road. No, southbound. Southbound. And then you turn left. Southbound left to get you onto Harmony. Right. That's true. Oh, yeah. I thought you said eastbound. Eastbound left turn movement. Eastbound left would actually be from the school's parking lot onto High Road. Okay. I'm reading that as eastbound to get onto Harmony eastbound. Uh oh, okay. No, so that would be a southbound left. Okay, okay that would be a southbound left. All right. So the eastbound left turn to get from the school onto high. Okay, all right, I see. So yeah, I think what they're saying is student drop off is causing trouble. Okay, um, well that's good because I didn't want anybody going, taking high road and then cutting through on harmony. It didn't seem to make sense. Yeah, that would be a little weird. Um, recommendation number four, which I think is on the next page. So the recommendation of a t changing a four-way stop where two, uh, rural or county roads cross one another, changing that to a two-way stop, how is that, that cannot improve safety? I think it was just to reduce queue lengths. Yeah. But that's also one of those 2050 recommendations and crystal balls are only so good. Yeah, because I, I would just, I would not be in favor of keeping that as a recommendation. I just feel like that's, um, I mean, why not suggest a roundabout if then if we're trying to it right. It would be a solution to a problem. I just see it leading to increase uh, more uh, severe accidents for people who maybe are accustomed to not having to. You know. Well, and it was two way for quite a while. They recently changed it to four way, but I too would be a little bit surprised if even after being advised that there is this TIA that has. Mm -hmm. Some analysis, decades hence, says, hey, keep an eye on it. I just think of all of the intersections I used to drive through in Sheboygan that started being replaced by roundabouts to mm -hmm. reduce the T-boning crashes. Um, it seems like this would be going backwards. So I'm concerned about that one. Um, and then a couple questions in the executive summary. It mentions the opening year. Um, but it's a reference to the opening year being in 2029. I don't know if that's a term of art in TIAs, but they're, uh, the developer's planning to have residents moving in this year and to, it's going to be fully occupied by 2029. Yeah. So I wasn't sure what opening year is a reference to. So that meant all the roads that are contemplated and all be, the houses are there. Right, so that's what the opening fully is. Yeah. The transportation system is open. Okay. Um, I noted that the TIA guidance in Middleton hasn't been updated in 18 years. And that seems like something that maybe warrants looking at. Um, so I would encourage the Public Works Committee to think about looking at that in the future. I know, you know, we've had other documents that hadn't, like our comprehensive plan hadn't been updated in a number of years. So I would add this one to the list. Um, question about the road name. So is the road changing names from Bellefontaine to Junco as you cross the street or is? No, but. Because that's what the, one of the images show high road, Bellefontaine on the left and Junco on the right. And I thought yeah. keeping that name. Get to a diagram. So, so Bellefontaine is going to come up and and is designed to extend north right. in the future. But for right now, it's practical daylight is Junco Drive out okay. to Pheasant Branch Road. 
because the, the image I'm thinking of definitely shows high road where the two sides, where the two developments meet and it's labeled as Junko. So that, it, oh. if that's just a mistake in the TIA, that's fine. I just, it I would hope- probably was some internal confusion because yes. they didn't, when they started this, they didn't know the names of some of these streets. Sure. And so I said, oh, Junko is the extension of Bellefontaine. They may have mistaken that to be that they're the same. Okay. Um, and then section 3.5.1, I'm sorry, didn't write the page number down. It says, additionally, the site is anticipated to be readily accessible to both bicyclists and pedestrians via the presence of sidewalks throughout the development. My question is, can bikes ride on the sidewalk? And is there not a plan to have the bike path from Misty Valley uh, continue through Red Tail Ridge? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't think we encourage bikes to ride on sidewalks. Maybe, maybe we could change that sentence to say the presence of sidewalks and multi-use paths Those are somewhat limited. They're a little bit throughout too. But is the bike path going to continue? The Bellefontaine one is intended to continue. So that goes along, but there are some through the multi-lots too mm -hmm. that sort of interconnect. And then some of them go through parks that connect. Um, so there's a whole... Uh, in the general implementation plan, the master planning shows where all the bike connectivity is. Yeah. I think I would refer to those instead of, or in addition to sidewalks. So oh, three, five, one. Um, page 34 mentions a recreational community center. I don't write it down, it won't have happened. So, okay, uh, sorry about that. So that's okay, page 34, there's a table and it makes reference to a, the Recreational Community Center. And I've been reading through a lot of different plans, so it, <laughs> it could just be misremembering, but I don't remember there being a large recreational facility. Mm -hmm. um, and not that it makes a difference for the TIA, but I'm just curious if that's still part of the plan. I see Chad is on. I don't know yeah. if you can comment on that. Are you with us, Chad? If not, I can ask him some other time. Um, I think this was just summarized from the GIP table though. I am, I am with you, I'm sorry. I think that, that that's a summary for the complete neighborhood areas and there is a pool and a workout room and that kind of stuff. So I think it might just be kind of a broad term okay. for what we consider to be the community-based resources in the neighborhood. If that makes sense? So yes. Clubhouse kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then Sean on page 36, the other developments are listed. Um, and my question is, does does the reference to these other developments, especially Bell Farm, mean that the TIA takes into consideration the cumulative impacts of traffic? So this is background traffic, but they're just saying, let's pretend by some year, it's already there. So it's, it's not like we're studying this absent any other development happening, because we know that's happening. Um, and then finally, did the T, maybe it doesn't make a difference, but we are going to be discussing later tonight, changing the speed limit from 35 to 25 on Bellefontaine. I'm just wondering if that played, it, would that change at all influence the traffic patterns that they were analyzing? I think it's pretty much been designed that way already in Bell Farm uh, and sort of de facto by not expanding uh, Bellefontaine through Misty Valley. I think we're kind of expecting that already. 
uh, when the MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization, did their traffic forecasting, they modeled Bell Farm as a two-lane road at 25 miles an hour. Okay. That's all I had. All right. So we had a motion to approve the TIA report. Um, we did, but again, I don't like the northbound. I'd, I'd like some discussion of the northbound bypass lane. Um, and then Sean noted the changes that needed to be made to split the, um, the recommendation regarding the left turn lanes. Yeah, so this eastbound left really should be a city responsibility. So it should be moved from 1A down into 2 someplace. And so, if the committee's uh, amenable, we could at least discourage northbound uh, bypass. It's not entirely our, actually, that side of the road isn't in the city of Middleton. So we may not get to be the last word on that, but we could provide some advice on it. If or when the day. Whose comes. jurisdiction is that? That's in, uh, I think, Springfield. Pretty sure the east side of that road. Um, so the changes are to make the eastbound left turn lane referenced in 1A a city responsibility. Yes. I think we should also change that construct by 2050 if deferred from phase one. I would... Well, again, I'd welcome discussion about this. I, I'm not comfortable leaving it to uh, having the developer um, obligated to do something in the year 2050. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. if, if it's really something that looks like it's going to be needed, like you said, Sean, does it make sense to build it from the beginning <laughs> or do you just add it later, but not 21 years after the right. development. Part of phase five is yeah. back and tear out part of phase one. So how, what? And I'm just trying to figure out maybe the best way to phrase it because the report says do it by 2050. We as the city would want them to modify that perhaps to say, well, do it as part of phase one, but no later than phase five or something. Right. Unless so that's... we care, in which case, let's just say phase one. But I agree. And that's so, constructing during that. phase one or before phase two or something like that? I mean, this only refers to westbound, right? This would be just the just westbound. Just the westbound. Or do we just, well, I guess looking to see where else do we have dates? Uh, yeah, we don't have firm dates. It would just be phases after that. So change that. I, I, I guess I would like to hear Chad's reaction to changing it to phase one. Yeah, do you care one way or the other, Chad? Adding that left turn lane in phase one construction right away? No, I don't really care. We were kind of planning on it anyway. Um, if I had the... I mean, it, if I had the flexibility to maybe do it before phase two or something, that might be nice, just depending on costs initially and so on and so forth. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to come back and redo it. Yeah, that'd be the killer because then you're paying for it twice. Yeah, right. So, no, we were pretty much anticipating it. So it's not a shock. And But that's something that also, you know, could be a requirement of this, of the SIP and so on and so forth. So. I think Sean and I can work that out and get it done. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, I don't mind. Okay, so change by 2050 in the parenthetical to just say construct by by phase two. Yeah. Why don't we just say in phase one? It'd be, yeah. I think, even sillier yeah. if we just built it and move people in and say, hey, guess what? We're tearing out the brand new road. Okay. Yeah, that's probably. All right. They'd so get mad at me. Um, <laughs> construct in phase one the left uh, west okay. bound left turn you just say okay so that's three changes then eastbound left turn is a city responsibility 
the westbound by phase one. Yeah. Discourage the bypass lane. And one bypass. Yeah, that's one B. How about if we? Huh. Maybe I'll just rephrase that whole thing to say they'll recommend it in the report to construct and work on the public works committee to discourage. That sounds good. Thank that you. way I'm not taking it away from this. And then, well, and also you say that is town of Springfield, correct? Pretty sure the east half of the road is still in the town. Yeah. Okay. Um, because this recommendation then and also the one about uh turning Falzer and pheasant branch into a two-way stop um those are topics that's another one that i would want you to rephrase um to say it's number four you know it i guess this is under monitoring um but you know the town of springfield is going to be meeting with the town of or the city of Middleton to go over some work group transportation, both traffic and uh, stormwater are the two work groups that we're organizing. Mm -hmm. And so I think this these two items here could be discussed with that work group. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's as clean as, you know, these northbound bypass lanes probably affect both city and town right of way. Yeah, because you know, the alignment would have to shift a little bit. It's it's not all on the east side of the road. Part of it would be on the right. right side of. The road. Well, for number four, again, my concern with both of these is just the safety of, um, in this case, mostly drivers, but uh, for the bypass lanes, I'm worried about bikes and um, bikes, pedestrians, and I guess trying to think of where the second access point is where is that in relation to the northern parking lot for pheasant branch because that too it's still north if i'm remembering right but i i think that's a good consideration too so the report says you know keep an eye on that and if you start to notice significant operational or safety issues here's one way you might want to address it mm -hmm. we could add advice that you know there may also be concern I guess what what I would recommend is can we take out the the clause beginning which may benefit from uh, and replace it just with, leave it do you leave the recommendation as the town of Springfield is advised to monitor the potential for operational or safety issues at the Pheasant Branch Road Balzer intersection oh okay. period and then just reference section eight point three that has the rest of that yeah okay. It's within our purview just to change what the PIA consultant said. Well, this is just my memo of recommendations. Okay. So I think if we're saying, you know, number one, we're advising the town to monitor it for operational or safety issues and go see section 8.3. I didn't copy the entirety of section 8.3. Right, but I mean, that was that recommendation part of the TIA that SRF did? Uh, section 8.3 is in there. So they said, yeah, look, there, we're projecting by 2050, there's going to be some operational problems. Here's how we would suggest addressing it. But since it's not a city of Middleton thing, all I wanted to do was say, well, let's make sure that the town is not surprised by that, that they're aware of that. That we've done this analysis, and they should keep an eye on. Okay. So if I took notes correctly, the changes are one, make the eastbound left turn a city responsibility. Two, ask the, have the developer uh, build the westbound left turn lane in phase one. Three, discourage the construction of bypasses on Pheasant Branch. And then four, taking out the second part of that sentence in, yeah. in item number four. Just remove those words. Yep. Okay. I think it's fine. They're still then advised. Yep. Pay attention. Yeah. So that's my amended motion and 
I think you seconded it. Are you okay with those changes? All right, so uh, then on the amended motion, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes have it and- I think I have three votes. I don't know, it disappeared. Yeah. No, my phone just fell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a tough night over there. So you were in favor or opposed? I, I was in favor, yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. To number four, then. Only had a couple of things that I offered as suggested edits in the request for qualifications. And the art com arts committee wants us to approve this? I think they just wanted input because it's in a right of way. Okay. Well, let's, I, I guess, do we need, to, if we don't have an action, then can we just open the discussion? Bob? Sure. Yeah, we don't have to provide input. No, I, I mean. Well, yeah, I'd like to provide input. It's just that we don't have we a, don't have a motion. formal action. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Well, sure. Yeah, we can talk about things and then decide what we want to include for input. All right. Can you share yours first, John? Uh, yeah, so my two really were just to uh, uh, contact WISDA and see what, if anything, they might be concerned with, because this is still state right away. It's under our jurisdictional control, but it's still owned by them. So we just want to make sure they don't say flatly, no. That'd be the end of it. And then the second thing was just to make sure that wherever this is specifically cited isn't so close to existing underground utilities that it might have to be relocated just yeah. for future maintenance. Who's going to have the final say as to what the design of the artwork is going to be? Is that going to be the Arts yeah. Committee or does that get approved by the entire council? Well, the council would have to approve it ultimately, the, but in the document, it said that the Arts Committee would make a, they'd make the selection and then refer it to Public Works and Plan Commission before going to Council. And my thought was, why would we and the Plan Commission need to, I mean, if, as long as the things that you just mentioned, Sean, are addressed, um, and as long as the land use has been, it, you know, as long as it's consistent, and I would imagine the public art master plan should have been reviewed by the plan commission to make sure that, you know, if it's identifying, I think the document says that our mentor is, uh, what do they call it? Corridor. <laughs> yeah, a corridor, which um, given your comment about the state, uh, this is a state right away, <laughs> if yeah. our if mentor is the corridor, I would hope our master plan was checked first to make sure that we could even do that. Yeah. So, but but as long as those comments are addressed now, I really don't see the need for a review by plan commission or public works. I do. You do? Oh yeah. Okay. I think that I think the the utility review and access to these utilities is important. Right. But I'm saying as long as that's handled now before we even well you don't know until the design's done whether it's whether it's just appropriate or not. yeah i know the the only time we had real input on public art was there was a uh, sculpture in deming way in the median of deming way uh near airport road uh and we just wanted to make sure it was reasonably safe for an errant driver that they weren't just driving into tons of bronze out there well, and, and for this location, that close to that roundabout, which is a fairly tight roundabout yeah. and has a lot of traffic in it, you don't want it to be terribly distracting either for motorists. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't okay with this general sort of this site. It's pretty far from where I've ever seen somebody 
drive by mistake. I'm not worried about them driving it through it by mistake. I'm worried about them gawking at it and running into somebody else. Depending on what <laughs> it is, right? If it's uh, highly kinetic or yeah. reflectorized, um, it could be distracting. Right. Uh, until we know what it is, I don't know if it might be a problem. But I think, that would, still, I think that would be another reason for it to come back to this mm -hmm. committee. But yeah, right yeah. There. well, that yeah. makes sense. There's storm sewer from this low point that goes kind of under the sign. But I don't know where all the dry utilities like TDS and gas right. and electric yeah. go. I don't know that yet. It seems like those questions should be answered before we solicit requests for qualifications and pay $500 honoraria. You know what I mean? Like Good to call diggers hotline and get it. Right. <laughs> your stuff. Right. Is this, is this spot the spot or is it? Yeah, because that might, the exact location might make a difference in what an artist is going to design and pose. Yeah. Cause I'd much rather delay I don't want to delay anything, but I'd much rather take time at the beginning to make sure the site is going to be even feasible than find out when they come to us with a proposed design that, you know, actually, this isn't a good spot for it, regardless of what the, I mean, the, the yeah. design itself might ultimately be distracting and, and not work for this location. But if it physically is not the right location because of utilities, None of that matters. We should know that up front. Depends on the size of them. Yeah. You know, it depends yeah. on the size of the artwork. I mean, it could be fine with the utilities and then it couldn't be. I don't think we should leave that up to an artist to determine whether it's acceptable in terms of the utility maintenance. Right. I think it needs to come back to yeah. how it works. I agree. Um, Sean, a couple other suggestions for this the only place where sculpture is mentioned is on the title page mm -hmm. and so if they truly are only interested in sculpture that should probably be reflected elsewhere in the document yeah and i kind of struggled with that too and i think that's what i came back to and went, yeah oh yeah i searched for, a struggle right I, I searched for sculpture and it came up twice in this packet once on the agenda and once on the title page of the of the request so they should i mean my question was, are, would they entertain like a standing mural? Um, but if they have sculpture in the title page, it just should be mentioned elsewhere. Um, and then I had a question about re reimbursement of travel expenses. It, it just seems to me that those should be consistent with what employees would get reimbursed if they had to travel, because there's a limit of $250 and it's only for, um, artists who live more than 100 miles, 100 miles or more away. And I thought, well, if someone came down from Baraboo and drove all that distance and had to get a meal, like if, if staff were to travel <clears throat> less than 100 miles, would you be entitled to mileage and a meal? Probably. And so I, I just feel like the so. The travel expenses or travel reimbursement should be consistent with what the policy is for city employees to be. That certainly is input we could provide for the arts committee. And then the only other thing I was concerned about winter installation. It seems, it seems like installing in winter, not an artist, but I am maybe a an ice and I, Yeah. <laughs> Install it. Mm. Yeah. I didn't catch that. Works. Well, it's winter or spring. It's at the it's keep going. When they do their timeline. Yeah, they show the timeline. Probably. It's it's possibly. Keep going. Keep going. See that winter, winter 23, 24. Spring. Yeah. Well, if it's something already complete that they can just set on a pad that's already been poured, uh, that might be possible. But yeah, they're not going to be out pouring conks. Right. Start to get crazy. So, do we want to offer that they could discourage winter installation?
So we don't need a motion or anything on this, Sean. This is just input that will come from you to the arts committee. Uh, I could say, yeah. It, Do you want a motion on it? If you if you want a motion to include that, that's fine. Otherwise, I can say so. Discussed sure. by the committee, and the following input is offered. And I'm fine with that here. I think the most important recommendation that we have is to check the utility, you know, yeah. do that homework in advance before this goes out. Yeah, so I think I have recommended something a little softer, but I'll, I'll tighten that up to suggest that they call Digger's hotline and provide a drawing of that information. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a motion with some of those points in it, that that's what we want to provide to the Arts Committee. Yeah, that's fine, too. Okay. So. I'll, I'll make that motion. <laughs> yeah. we, Charles, we'll, go ahead. Uh, oh, I was, going going to, I was going to be asked to be recognized as a member of the public since I can't speak otherwise. But Sean actually took the point that I was going to make that we should ask them to include uh, in the RFQ, the known locations of all utilities. Yeah. So, thanks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so the notes that I've got dotted are to contact Wista, contact Digger's Hotline, and include that drawing. Um, reinforce that the art installation is limited to sculpture. Uh, provide travel reimbursement consistent with what city employees policy is and discourage winter installation. Missing anything, Gayathri? No. We're good. All right. Okay. Are we missing anything out here? No. Lisa, you made that as a motion? Yep. Yes. All right. Is there a second to Lisa's motion? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that will be our input to the Arts Committee. To number five, we're starting to get into speed limit discussions here. We've got two of those. The first is on Bellefontaine. Uh, talked about for a bit already. Right now, our ordinance sets the speed limit of Bellefontaine at 35 miles an hour. There are no signs posted yet uh, <laughs> because the road's only half done through one subdivision. But and it's more, half and it's half the size. It's half the size. <laughs> yeah, we built it from the median out. Just the north half of the road is there as designed. Um, but now with more recent thinking and design of Bellefontaine in Bell Farm, which is of course not yet approved for being built, its design contemplates something much like what's already in Misty Valley. So it would right. remain narrow, two lanes. And, um, and with an intended posted speed of 25 miles an hour. So we have a road that's designed for 35, but not posted at all. And we have a road that's designed for 25 miles an hour, not yet built. And then this other one in the wings further east at Redtail Ridge uh, is being designed consistent with Bell Farm. And so while we're limiting access to increase or to decrease you know, conflicts, friction, and maximize throughput, even if at a lower speed, uh, it still is intended to be 25 miles an hour. So that's why I'm recommending effectively for catching up our old ordinance and old thinking with our new planning. So this would then be a recommendation of the License and Ordinance Committee? And, recommendation and of the council for, for them to get to the common council okay. with an ordinance change. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll make a motion um, that we recommend to the LNO committee and the council to modify ordinance 15.02, section one, to delete the reference to Bellefontaine Boulevard having a speed limit of 35 miles per hour. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I I think there was lots of support for this in uh, my district. And I just had a question for Sean. When will a sign be posted? Will that happen after there's been some construction or? Uh, I I think once we change it, we could put a sign. We didn't want to put a 25 sure. sign up because that's not our <laughs> ordinance. Um, as soon as the common council. Ordinance. Yeah, after it's an ordinance, I think then I'd feel pretty good about putting the sign up. Okay. Just one. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we will so recommend to the LNO committee. And the next on our agenda is much like the last, is that Bishop's Bay Parkway is both designed for and posted at 30 miles an hour. It's unlikely to be extended anytime soon. So it really only serves access to a couple of multifamily sites and uh, two cross streets that are both local roads. So part of the problem has been that after people see the 30 mile an hour sign, there's complaints of speeding through the rest of the neighborhood because we don't put 25 mile an hour speed limit signs on every local residential street. Uh, and so the request really started with, well, why don't we put 25 mile an hour signs on the side streets? And it struck me in looking at this other issue that maybe the better answer is let's just make the whole subdivision 25 miles an hour until or unless it goes because it's designed, of course, to go all the way through over to County Q uh, or County M from Q. But I think that might be a very long time. And Sean, by the input from residents, this is all being driven by residents? I mean, uh, the complaints of speeding on local roads is from one of the Bishop's Bay community managers. Okay. Uh, and so I just mentioned uh, to both that manager and um, uh, Alder Crow that I'd be bringing this idea to the committee instead of posting 25 signs on side streets if speeding's the problem, because there just isn't gonna be much time savings between 25 and 30 miles an hour on that little stretch of Bishop Bay Parkway. If we can get people in the right mindset, maybe they'll be all right. Alder Crow didn't have any concern. I didn't hear from him on that. Okay. Well, I guess if it's going to go to, I mean, the recommendation would just be to send to L and O for further consideration so they can get some feedback then. Yeah, there's time. Yeah. Great. I guess I'll make another motion. Um, I move that we recommend to the L and O committee and common council that we modify ordinance 15.02 section one to delete the reference to Bishop's Bay Parkway having a speed limit of 30 miles per hour. Okay, is there a second to Lisa's motion? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that will be our recommendation to the LNO committee. All right. So. Uh, well, next up on our agenda, I'll go back. We've got two utility uh, items, uh, and utility manager Dave Sarbacher is joining us um, via Zoom here. Uh, I'll mention too, these are Dave's final reports. He has announced his retirement, effective June 3rd, I want to say, uh, would be as June 2nd, last day in the office. Uh, and and then he'll have some uh, deserved vacation time <laughs> on the books uh, to use up, but not in the office. Um, and so, from a selfish point of view, I'm really glad he finished these. Um, so Dave's here for questions more than anything, but of course we send the water utility, water quality report out annually, and then we also file annually our sewer utility compliance report. Can we make comments on the? Okay, sure. I, I just had a couple of uh, tweaks, if possible, on page 67, which is the first page of the document. Yep. Okay. So the third paragraph 
who refers to regularly scheduled meetings are regularly scheduled meetings right there in the middle. This one? Yep. Okay. Yep. And it, but it doesn't actually say the Public Works Committee. Do you see where it says, please attend any of our regularly scheduled meetings? So if somebody were to look on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, just a suggestion attend any of the regularly scheduled meetings of public works committee, something like that, I think would be. I might say that the public works committee serves as the board for the utilities and right. it meets the second and fourth yep. Wednesdays. Yeah, just something to indicate who the we, who, you know, when it says our meetings, who's who's the we. There's only one important committee. <laughs> <laughs> And then I had a question at the bottom uh, of this particular page. It makes a reference to post the last paragraph. The city will send postal notices to perform surveys of residential, commercial, and industrial buildings throughout the community. And my question was, is, is this something that, is it like a random selection or is this for new buildings? Like who, who, gets, who gets these notices? Yeah, so we go through all of them, but I don't know offhand, and Dave will, if there's a particular rhyme or reason. We have a contract for a lot of our commercial inspections um, through, you know, this cross-connection control program. Mm -hmm. And I'm drawing a blank on their name right now, but we have a Hydro contract. Corp. Dave is on HydroCorp. <laughs> Hydro yep. Yeah. So they do that for us. And do you know, Dave, is there a particular rhyme or reason or frequency that they follow? It's all dependent on the hazard level of each individual facility. Some maybe two years, some maybe four, some maybe 10. Okay. okay. All depends on what the hazard level is for whatever production or whatever plumbing is going on in that particular building or facility. Okay, thank you for answering that, Dave. Um, and then on page, where's that link? It might oh, pay for me to we did our meter change out maintenance, and then um, that's a twenty-year change out on the meter itself. Yeah, I was just thinking I might suggest we mention that city or hydrocorp would send notices because people might see that too at some point on, as a logo. Yeah, it comes that that on our letterhead. It, it'll be on our letterhead, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. as long as it's going on our letterhead, I think you can leave it. That's, that's fine. Okay. Commercial and industrial buildings, the building code requires uh, backflow prevention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they check to make sure that those are, are uh, tested regularly as well. The state sends out reminders to each one of those buildings every year for the testing and the certification. Um, on the next page, Sean, under the definition of terms, there's a link to water and sewers, water and sewer utilities webpage. Do you see that? Uh, this one? Yep. So it says a listing of contaminants for which we test is available on the webpage. Mm -hmm. I, I, feel strongly that if we provide a link, it should go to the table, the listing of contaminants. Because if you click on that, it just takes you to the main page. And then you have to oh, find out to where the table is. Yeah. And I, I just, I think to be I think helpful. We'll want to make sure it gets to the right page. The link itself probably downloads a PDF. And that's that's fine as long as people don't have to like when I click on a link like that, I'm expecting to bring up or or at least go to a page where it's crystal clear. This is where, you know, this is the page where it talks about the contaminants and here's your link to the list and it doesn't do that. So okay. I just feel like that should be changed. Yeah. Um, and then on page 69, <laughs> again, under the table at the, uh, it continues at the top. Page 16. Yep, at the, the paragraph right there. So um, the second line refers to Middleton Waterworks. Yeah. Just for consistency, it, I think it should be. <laughs> oh, okay. And then this paragraph talks about um, 
lead and the impact on infants and children, it, if it's possible to fit in a sentence about the impacts on uh, or <laughs> hazards for pregnant women, pregnant nursing women and their offspring, I think that's important too. Uh, that's like somewhere between the children could show slight deficits and adults who drink. <laughs> In the paragraph, I would add a sentence about pregnant and nursing women as well. Yeah. But, you know, it's especially important for women who are pregnant or nursing to avoid drinking water containing lead. Okay. That's all I had. All right. Change that then. <laughs> Any others? And then we need a motion to have this sent out, correct? Uh, yeah, so we typically then approve that and then we get that sent out with our billing <laughs> and post it. Um, so I guess I'll make a motion to approve the water quality or consumer confidence report um, with the, with the changes discussed. Yeah. All right. Second to that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, uh, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and Sean, you can make those corrections, and then it can be sent out. Sure. All right. And then our last thing is about a resolution, which we recommend to the Common Council so that we can file the report, which is our typical annual report. So you need a motion to approve resolution 2023-29? Yeah, that yeah. will recommend the Council do that. All right, I move that we recommend that council approve resolution 2023-29. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have a couple things on page 74. Um, it mentions an energy study. Has an energy study been performed for your pump slash lift stations? And the answer is no. And I thought Middleton had an energy study done uh, in 2020. I asked Kelly Hilliard if they looked at, um, I know they looked at water utility, but I don't know if they looked at sewer. It's a good question. I had heard too, I thought water pumps were looked at at some yeah. point. I don't know about sewer pumps. Okay. Do you know the state of hand? Yeah, that's yeah, my recollection was the, they were more looking at the water end of it than the sewer end of it. And we typically just make those, um, we have done some as we do maintenance on the lift stations. Um, I know we had a focus on energy uh, helper on uh, Esther lift a few years ago. So we look at, you know, chances to upgrade pumps and controls and that kind of thing as we do maintenance on the lift stations themselves. Okay. But no, not as a part of a energy study per se. Okay. Great, and, and yes, Dave, related to that on the next page, page 75, it says uh, for one of the actions, continuing this topic, um, incorporate energy saving components during maintenance replacement when possible. And I would totally love to see this um, done, uh, you know, bring, bring us budget requests. Well, Sean will bring us Some <laughs> budget requests. I have both of my fingers crossed. They won't be there. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. And that's that's what we do is, you know, as we need to replace motors and starters and those kinds of things, we upgrade them to the, the, the better, more efficient controls and motors and things like that. So that's, I mean, some of these lift stations are 60, 70 years old. So as we rehab them, we try to bring up some, uh, you know, energy saving um, processes as well. Great. 
All right, so we have a motion and we have a second and under discussion. Uh, any further discussion by any committee members? I'm just going to say uh, to Dave, thank you for your service and congratulations on your retirement. As a 20 year veteran of the art of retirement, you will love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Okay. Last item on our agenda. All right. I make a move motion that we adjourn. Is there a second to Carl's motion? I'll second it. All right. Discussion? Under discussion, I am going to ask for just a moment of personal privilege to say goodbye to folks here. This is my last. <clears throat> Uh, public works committee meeting after doing this for 12 years and um, I have enjoyed serving on the committee I have learned a lot about Middleton's infrastructure both above ground and below ground and met a whole lot of very interesting uh, people both civilians and council members in the process and uh, I just wish everybody uh, well in the future on this committee and um, I've enjoyed working with you and well, same here, because I've been here the whole time, too. Yes, you have. It'd be time for me to drop the mic and say, <laughs> lion's out. There you well, go. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. Uh, your I've been, That's a long time. That's dedication. I've enjoyed I got one. I've, I'm the designee to the Conservancy Lands Commission, and uh, they meet on Wednesday night, and then that's farewell. So thank you, everyone. And Sean, thank you in particular, because... Um, I've served on a lot of committees for various organizations, and you do a great job of providing us with information that is digestible and complete, and uh, it's much appreciated, makes the job of the committee much easier, and um, you do a very good job with it. And you can pass that along to all of the engineering techs who um, come and present to this committee as well. They do this, the same, and the folks in the field who patch the streets and remove the snow and chip the brush and suck up the leaves and everything else that they do to a great job as well. Well, thanks. On, on behalf of very many people, yeah, I appreciate it. Because it's not all sunshine and roses. <laughs> I wish you hadn't said some of that on live TV here. <laughs> now people don't expect that, but still. <laughs> well, that's part of the city's incentive program here. Yeah. Well, okay, we have a motion uh, to adjourn in a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Great. Great. Okay. So 12 years, and you've 12 been years. retired for 20. So you haven't perfected the art of <laughs> 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 retirement. <laughs> no. Very good.